Let's be honest. Bastard Season 1 kinda sucks. The show is Netflix's newest reboot and revival of the popular manga which started in 1988. But can Netflix save an outdated story with fancy animation and waifus? Let's save you some time and dive right in. In episode 1, the show opens with a giant bastard hanging out in the sky wreaking havoc on the world. We get an endless slew of credits for the first 5 minutes, completely distracting us from enjoying the opening backstory. 400 years into the future, the city of Metallicana is being attacked. I guess trademark infringement isn't a thing anymore in the future- NOW I SEE WHY THIS SHOW IS SO POPULAR! We learn that Dark Schneider is a threat to society. Our hero must make sure that he cannot plague us again with more Nickelodeon foot fetish shows. What? Yeah. Sch Schneider, right? That's Dan Schneider, not Dark Schneider. Oh, my bad. Anyways, we find out their biggest chance to survive this onslaught isn't their queen, but the spirit of Dark Schneider. But his spirit is trapped within the body of the young boy, Lucian. The only way to get him to come out of the boy is for Yoko to shove her massive chest into his dying face. It does the trick! Dark Schneider kicks some serious ass and saves the day. Who would have seen that coming? Yoko can't seem to wrap her head around the unassuming young boy transforming into a tall, buff, and handsome man. That's sure to cause all sorts of confusion. But, like any brooding metalhead edgelord, a good scolding is enough to make him cower. When the evil army finally advances, Dark Schneider pulls a wild card and gapes the enemy with his magic spell properly named Sodom. The unnamed and unimportant intro villain gets obliterated by Dark Schneider Schneider's insane power. It does something to Princess Sheila's loins. Yoko also gets a tad bit flushed. It almost feels like the show is supposed to be on a different website. Dark Schneider really puts the moves on Yoko by, uh, telling her he hates her. So she likes being degraded too! I totally relate to this show. In episode 2, we start off with Yoko in a field of flowers and ho oh, mama! Oh, it was just a dream. The same one I had after episode 1. Wow, the show really does have something for everyone. It seems like everyone in the kingdom is reluctant to reawaken Dark Schneider, yet they have no other good defenses against their enemies. And the moment there's trouble in the kingdom, they all want to awaken him. They seriously, in all their vast magical abilities, couldn't come up with a spell that didn't involve forcing Yoko to make out with a minor. We're then rewarded with a naked Dark Schneider appearing. He turns out to be a Ken doll. How disappointing. There's beef between our anti-hero and Yoko's father, Ron Swanson. Dark Schneider attempts to kill Yoko's father after he represents his hood. But Dark Schneider isn't as hard as he thinks he is. Gee, I wonder how the townsfolk are doing while this is going on. Oh, yikes! While Yoko stands by and does nothing as her people are murdered by Dark Schneider, the Dark Rebel army steals the show by barging in with their almighty Hydra. The almighty Hydra is immediately bodied by Dark Schneider's stone Gundam. It's kind of like a mini Godzilla versus King Kong scene. Thankfully, before Dark Schneider can redirect his attacks on Ron Swanson, Yoko hugs him, stopping his attacks. That's conveniently effective. Yeah, it turns out Lucian and Dark Schneider are actually the same soul. This is quite the predicament for Yoko who's playing r slash 5050 with a minor and a man of age. Yikes! In episode 3, we find out that Dark Schneider is the most powerful being in the world. Yet he still has enemies that want to attempt fighting him. They must have a death wish. It seems like the mouth movement animator is also the voice actor for Yoko's father. Could they seriously not hire anyone else? While the villains break the first of four seals that hold their god of destruction, Yoko struggles with her emotions. I mean, how bad could unwillingly being roped into kissing the kid you babysit every time your kingdom is in trouble be? What is happening? Princess Sheila points out she's only ever seen Dark Schneider naked. You and us both, sister. Gara, one of the rebel four heavenly kings, gets his royal jewels rocked by Yoko. So she's not completely useless to defending the kingdom. Lucian reversed to catch a predator's Gara before he can go any further. But to no avail as he escapes with Yoko as his hostage. Yoko's dad doesn't seem to care. In fact, no one really seems to be that concerned. For how big of a deal kissing people is, they really seem to jump to that as the solution at every opportunity. Even the evil overlord Dark Schneider has morals and limits when it comes to monogamy. Princess Sheila ends the episode with a slap to the face. I wonder if that's how fans of the manga felt when they waited 20 years for this. In episode 4, it looks like the slap worked as Dark Schneider and Princess Sheila are setting out to rescue Yoko. Gara, inspired by Silence of the Lambs, has trapped Yoko in as well. Dark Schneider commands Princess Sheila Sheila to take off her armor as she's slowing down their rescue party and making the show worse. The literal white knights surrounding them pretend to not want that. What is that, a boob sling? Did she pop an implant or something? This show is one slime monster away from being late night HBO. Oh, there it is. Our party runs into trouble when a giant minotaur shows up and... 
lets them walk right past it. While the knights hold off the Minotaur, Dark Schneider commands Sheila climb the ladder first as the show hasn't had a Biddy's shot for 15 seconds. Dark Schneider finally gets an ego check when a beholder shows up and negates all his magical attacks. He's wounded! Ah, oh, it just disappeared. On their way to rescue Yoko, Princess Sheila picks up a cursed sword that goes out of control. She slices Dark Schneider on accident and inflicts a poison on him. In order to save him, Sheila has to... You gotta suck it. Yeah. Okay, buddy. The, uh, process is interrupted by the demon lord, Efrido Lay. Owned by PepsiCo. In episode 5, Efreet begins his attack on Dark Schneider and Princess Sheila. Dark Schneider seems to be no match for Efreet's magic attacks. Wow. So, after the first few episodes built him up as some all powerful being, he's taken nothing but L's since the adventure actually started. What is he, Ash Ketchum? Gara gives the imprisoned Yoko a rundown of the Magical Powers Wikipedia page. He seems to just happen to have the whole thing memorized. The heat gets turned up to the max when Dark Schneider doubles down to the tune of Bad Era Metallica riffs. Dark Schneider uses Frito Lay's weight against him and wins the battle, advancing into where Yoko is being held captive. The battle between Gara and Dark Schneider begins. Wait, so Gara had some slime creature eat away at Yoko's clothes just to dress her again before this scene started? That's actually considerate of him. Just when the battle seems to be in our hero's favor, Gara is able to take off Dark Schneider's arm. Immediately after, Dark Schneider takes off Gara's arm, evening the playing field. So none of that served any purpose to the story? Nope. Gara then recounts things he didn't actually do to Yoko to make Dark Schneider unwilling to fight. This obviously angers Dark Schneider as it would anyone as he powers up and brings Gara's fortress to the ground. We then get a fourth wall break when Dark Schneider and Gara make up and turn into friends. Turns out Dark Schneider is a softy now. Also, they both have their arms back again. Dark Schneider confesses that he'll always love Yoko as we try not to develop neck and back injuries from how hard we're cringing at this scene. You haven't forgotten who I am, have you? Ah, the dragon's talking! In episode 6, we learn more about the villain Kal Su's evil plans and find out Gara has defected from the Four Divine Kings. Metallicana is under attack. Again. It's like New York in every superhero movie ever. We meet our next villain of the week and learn that she... <coughs> Uh, ha uh, has a history, a history with Dark Schneider. She reveals his true name as Darsh. What's this villain's name again? Uh, her name is Arsh. Are you serious? Darsh visits Arsh's dreams to keep the audience from turning this show off. And Ars sends her mercenary Shane Airy after Dark Schneider. Darsh, or Dark Schneider, travels off the beaten path with Lars the Dragon accompanying him. After saving a helpless maiden from an evil spider, they are invited to enjoy a feast at the woman's lavish abode. During a scene we can't show, Dark Schneider is tricked by the maiden who turns out to be Shane Airy, the mercenary sent to kill him. Dark Schneider is already three steps ahead and ends up getting the best of Shane Airy. And then, yes. Dark Schneider wins the heart of the mercenary, and after a clever transition, we find out all he did was bite her ear. Okay. In episode 7, we open up with Dark Schneider fighting against another mercenary. A pretty boy with looks enough to threaten Dark's ego. We learn that pretty much every character in this show is a virgin who makes up grandiose stories about their exploits. Kinda like real life anime fans. <laughs> The pretty boy turns out to be a pretty girl. Reverse trap card! The pretty girl, named Kai, casts stone magic on Dark. But before anything bad can happen, Shane Airy comes to the rescue and just kinda delays things. Things that didn't matter anyways as Dark breaks out of the stone magic cast on him. Turns out Dark has friends in high places that completely nullify any magic used against him. Kai falls to the hands of Dark Schneider after a beast she summon goes AWOL and Dark saves the day. We then get our scheduled, unnecessary love scene of the episode before Dark and Lars head off. In a surprise twist, Dark Schneider transforms back into Lucian. He's used up too much magic and is stuck as the young boy until someone can re-release him from the seal. Thankfully, Yoko and a rescue team is on the way after sensing the seal has been recast. In episode 8, Lucian and Lars end up finding Yoko bathing in a dark and dangerous forest. That was fast. The show ruins the surprise of Lars being the reincarnation of Prince Lars Ol Metallicana in a not-so-subtle backstory. We're introduced to another great villain, real-life Danzig. He's been trapped in the show and is now a corpse paint donning vampire obsessed with acquiring virgins. At his age, I think Danzig should just take what he can get. Lucian and Yoko are attacked by a werewolf with a fragile ego who is dealt with quickly when Dark Schneider's powers are able to break through the seal. It's not enough to trigger the full transformation though as Danzig shows up on the scene capturing Yoko and Lucian. We come to find out Danzig, or Diamon, has also captured the mercenaries from past episodes. During an intense battle between Diamon and the mercenaries, 
Lars explains that Dark Schneider is actually an alternate identity trapped inside Lucian's body. Wait, we already knew that. In Episode 9, the battle rages on, but Dark Schneider is able to break the seal on his own and escape his cage. It's not as easy as expected, though, when Dark Schneider's magic doesn't destroy Diamon. We get a double fake out when Diamon thinks he's killed Dark Schneider. But Dark was already prepared and ends the battle by opening a hole in the lair's walls, turning the vampire Diamon into a pile of dust. Or not, he's reformed into a bat. After five minutes of drawn out dialogue, we finally move on. In episode 10, we finally get some true development on our main villains. Arse, Dark Schneider's lady elf friend, is working with Kal Su to find and defeat Dark. She is put under a binding spell and warned that if her heart turns for Dark, her nail will turn purple, then to red, and then she will die. Dark friend zones Shane before he and Yoko head back to the kingdom of Metallicana. Oh yeah, the kingdom has been under attack for like five episodes. Arse advances on the kingdom, clashing with Gara, who has officially joined Dark Schneider because he's way more fun. After a long battle of constant fake-outs, ultimately making this whole episode unnecessary, Dark Schneider shows up and saves Gara from being killed. I hate filler episodes. In episode 11, after showing up on the scene to save the day, Dark uses his Playboy skills to stop Arse from doing any more damage. She notices that her nail has turned purple, indicating she has fallen for Dark once again. Gara just keeps screaming that he's gonna die while his ninja army just kinda stands there. Arse makes her escape and swears to kill Dark. Wait, why? If it's already too late for her, why doesn't she just join him? Rain begins to fall on the kingdom, and for some reason, this means the orc army can no longer advance. Princess Sheila and Ron Swanson visit old granny orb ponderer. She foretells of a terrible fate that will befall Dark as they peer into the crystal ball and see him with his heart torn out. Princess Sheila can't handle this news and goes to seek comfort and love from Dark Schneider. He reveals his true intentions are and have always been to betray the kingdom and eventually take over the world. Despite this news, Princess Sheila still insists that Dark take her body and submits herself to him. Not even we can argue with that logic. Arse approaches the castle again, and this time her presence sets off a huge reaction in Granny's crystal ball. Why that didn't happen the first time Arse showed up is a mystery. Arse then casts her all-powerful spell, Mega Death spelled differently to get right under those pesky trademark laws. In episode 12, the castle is rocked by the powerful spell cast by Arsh. Dark Schneider pulls a Peter Pan and starts flying around to confront Arsh. The battle lasts way too long while each side pulls out their trump cards one after the other. Dark Sword Ifrit comes out to save the day before committing seppuku on itself. That's ironic. Dark is defeated by Arsh when she runs at him, winding up the final kill shot. He just kind of stands there and let it happen. But he's not dead thanks to this show's brain dead plot armor. Hey, brain dead is the name of the spell Dark Schneider and Arsh are using against each other here. After a massive explosion, Dark seems to be defeated finally. In the final episode, he's alive! Uh, okay. Before any more blows can be exchanged, Dark Schneider pulls out the final move that stops any domestic dispute. He tells her that he loves her. This does not work! We get Arsh's backstory while she does battle. Turns out she's a halfling elf that wants to create a utopia under Kal Su. The battle continues to rage on until Dark Schneider confesses one last love to Arsh, which turns her heart once more. Her nail turns to purple, and then immediately to red. Count Chocula laughs and and watches the battle from a distance. We're not really sure why he's laughing though, as if Arsh dies, then he loses too. As Arsh and Dark Schneider gear up for their final attack, the whole kingdom watches in awe of this supreme power. The spirit of the boy Lucian appears before Dark and gives him a parting piece of advice before disappearing. Wait, what? Where the hell does he get off giving advice? He's literally done nothing this entire show, and he's the one now giving the saving throw? The magical blast fails to kill either of our combatants, and Dark approaches Arsh. He points out her nail, which is spurting blood, and shares one last line of sympathy before tearing out his own heart to save her from the spell. Thank goodness. It was either us or him at this point. In the end, Bastard Season 1 is exactly what you'd expect. An anime adaptation of a manga that came 30 years too late. True. True.